On this episode of TFL Talking Trucks podcast, I want to discover, explore, and talk about the topic of self-driving trucks. Now, this is the bane of some people's existence, but it's also the answer to other people's prayers. And we're going to go on both sides of this and talk about essentially making vehicles a little bit more intelligent so they can drive you. Or maybe a lot more intelligent. Well, Some of these the trucks are becoming smarter than I am. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not, but they're getting there. Okay. Honestly, though, there is, there's a big thing about AI, and a lot of that is involved with making these trucks more and more independent. And we are talking about autonomous driving. On this episode, I want to kind of rank the systems, right? Okay. I want to look at all the manufacturers in the United States mm -hmm. that produce and uh, sell pickup trucks. I want to bounded by pickup truck, okay? Right. Um, and rank them because we've had experiences with basically every system out there. Um, maybe, well, as, as far as on sale. Yes. Um, so we have experience driving these systems and being in these pickups. So I want to rank them and talk about all the different options that are ex exist out there. That sounds awesome, but before we do that. What should we do? We should thank our patrons. Uh, that's a great idea because yeah. you guys support us and help us produce this podcast. And specifically this week, Joe Henji Jr. Uh, Joe, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your last name, but um, he supported us on patreon.com slash TFL car, which is our only TFL page there. Mm -hmm. And it's a great way for you to interact with us. Uh, ask us questions, comments, and we hang out there in the chat room on patreon.com. So that's a great way to do it. Yeah, it's a great way to get directly in touch with us. Sometimes regular emails and whatnot, we get a lot, so they kind of fall through the so cracks. So it's hard for us to do every every email. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's really hard. Yeah. But in this case, it's a lot easier when you use Patreon. So thank you guys for your support. Without you, we couldn't do what we are doing now. Yeah, so uh, cruise controls obviously have been around for decades, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, which is kind of a, a device to maintain your speed. Uh, and then we've progressed way past that. But still, that promise of, you know, get into a pickup, give it a navigation point, you know, somewhere and just go to bed and sleep, that's still not here. It's closer than you think in some cases. It really does depend on the vehicle. And there are a variety of different systems that are becoming cheaper and cheaper to produce, easier and easier to put into trucks. And as such, just like cars, we are getting to the point now to where in some vehicles, they can take you from your house with very little input, get you onto the highway with almost no input in some cases, and get you almost to your destination getting off the highway, even in some cases if you're towing a trailer, which is insane. Exactly. So let's, how about this? How about we start uh, with a system that's uh, maybe not quite as advanced or mm -hmm. has full features right and work our way up to the system that you kind of described right yes uh, that's got many many features right super advanced a and this is also kind of a difficult subject which is why I kind of want to dedicate this episode to it because different manufacturers call it different names um, it's quite confusing uh, some manufacturers have unique features that are only uh, specific to them right now, uh, so let's start with Nissan. How about this? Yeah, Nissan has really kind of the baseline of n these types of systems because it gives you a couple things. Now, first of all, let's talk about autonomy before we get right into Nissan. There are various levels to it, and it really does start out with radar cruise control. That is essentially a radar system that is hooked up to your vehicle that bounces a signal back and forth off of something in front of you and maintains a safe distance, and it also can keep you at that distance as you're cruising down the highway. And then you bump it up by having lane departure control, which actually brings your vehicle back into the lane. And I think that's where we start with Nissan. Exactly. And they call their system Safety Shield 360, right. which is available on their full lineup of vehicles, Correct. including passenger cars, crossovers, SUVs, etc. Let's focus on the, uh, on the Titan uh, for now. Um, and here's kind of a list of what this system is capable of. And the beautiful thing about Nissan and Titan in this case is that is this safety shield system is available on across the board, no matter what trim you buy. Right. In other words, it's standard. Yeah. So, which is awesome because yes. some manufacturers will will discuss later offer piecemeal you know solutions, which I think is a bunch of bull. Yes. So here's kind of a list of what's available on the Nissan. And uh, so I just want to go down quickly. Yeah, hit it. 
automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection. Um, and this is also very helpful at slower speeds mm -hmm. uh, around town, something like this. Let's say you're driving and you, you lost uh, attention for a split second. Something comes up in front of you uh, and the truck will actually help you slow down or actually stop. That is correct. Uh, rear automatic braking, same thing, but in reverse. Right. Really helpful with trucks because sometimes you have a bunch of crud in your bed. Right. <laughs> So You're hauling stuff, and you can't see over your shoulder, or some someone just you know tailgates sit higher and higher nowadays, and looking over your shoulder may not be enough to stop the vehicle because you may not see something, even with if the camera is obscured something like that. This can help. Yeah. So and actually uh, can uh, break the vehicle in reverse, which is quite an advanced feature here mm -hmm. on Nissan. Um, and help you, you know, with fender benders and uh, many other things. Right. Rear cross traffic alert that helps that system in the backup. When you're backing up. Blind spot warning. This is not nothing new. Yes. Uh, it's been around on many vehicles for a long for time. For a long time. Lane departure warning. Warning. Uh, and we'll talk about assist later. Uh, high beam assist. Now, pretty much everything, every truck now has high beam assist. And the whole point of this is not to blind somebody who's coming the opposite direction. Am I correct? Yeah. And that's uh, kind of black magic. Uh, do you, <laughs> at least for me, because, um, and th these systems, by the way, and I'm not picking on Nissan, this yeah. is across the board, uh, Ford, Toyota, GM, and others, um, sometimes their work is intended. Uh, let's say you're on the highway during the night, uh, you want high beams and they're on, and all of a sudden the tra that oncoming traffic comes and it automatically turns down your high beam. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, I pulled in one day in my Ford F-150 into my neighborhood, and all of a sudden the Ford decided that in my neighborhood, at slower speeds, I needed high beams. Uh, Bam! I turned them on, and all of a sudden my neighbor house is lit up. So I don't think my neighbor appreciated that. No, this is exactly what I'd want. I want to blind everybody <laughs> on the street corner so they don't even know who I am. And that's exactly what Ford is thinking. So, Blame them! But it's, so, they're not the only ones that do this. A lot of the other ones have a similar system. Yeah. So I always think in the back of my mind, okay, if I was an engineer, what are the criteria, right? Because I'm analytical mind kind of starts to right. work. You know, when do you do it? When do you do Anyway, this could be a really crazy subject. Uh, adaptive cruise control. Yes, yes. We mentioned it already. Yes, we did. It has that. So on top of this, the Nissan system has a couple of other really cool things. First of all, traffic sign detection, recognition. Yes. So speed limits, stop signs, it can help you recognize, you know, and remind the driver about all those things. An intelligent driver alertness system. Yes. Uh, re do you remember these? I do. Where a little and coffee cup comes up? Yeah, and uh, it, it uses, a, it looks at you. And essentially, it, if it thinks you're nodding off or having problems with paying attention. Well, not always looking at you because uh, not all trucks have cameras inside, right? Right. It, well, it, it follows what you're doing. Yeah, like steering inputs, right? Um, if you're not maintaining constant speed, it right. uses all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So, and sometimes, actually, I've been in the Terra Tundra. Uh, driving cross country several times, as you know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> in our in our long term truck, and once in a while the alertness symbol in the Toyota would come on, mm. and I'm like, "What did I do?" And you know, I wasn't tired in this case. I'm like, "Was I? Did I swerve something?" You know, and I'm, I start questioning myself. So maybe you were drifting. Maybe that's the whole point of it. Is that drifting? It? Well, not drifting, drifting in your lane as well. <laughs> not not going sideways. Not sideways. No, not exactly. So so that's kind of the system. And that's already pretty full featured, right? Right. So that's what Nissan offers. Okay. So I guess the next step is Toyota, or is it? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So so Toyota is um, also in this realm, um, and offering the, these driver assistance uh, technologies. Um, do uh, is it time for a rant? Hit do, it. Do you hit? The, do you have a rant? Coming I have on? a rant coming up uh, with another a, automaker. A little later. Yeah. Okay. Well, here here's my rant Go for uh, it. on specifically Please. related to Toyota. Not well. Okay. Let's let's start there. Our 2022 Toyota Tundra has the aforementioned systems. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe not the, the rear automatic braking, uh, but Toyota calls their driver assistance technology Toyota Safety Sense, and then there's a number after it. Um, in the Tundra, it's TSS, Toyota Safety Sense 2.5, 2.5. Uh, does that mean anything to you? <laughs> well, the prior one had 2.0. 
Yes, and there was so, a one point oh before that. Right, so this is a half step up. That's half what they mean up. to say. Yes. Well, it's it's okay. The cruise control, the adaptive cruise works great. Yes. But the lane departure warning system oh constantly God. beeps. It's the worst. Constantly. Yeah. And, and you now, can you defeat it? Yes, it is defeatable, but, but not easily. And then on top of that, once you've defeated it, will it re-engage when you turn the vehicle back on after you shut it off? Yes. Exactly. Yes. So uh, what Andre is ranting about, and I agree with him 100%, is that when you're driving the vehicle just regularly, it will scream at you if you go anywhere near another lane. Now, sometimes, for whatever reason, you're going to be moving around in traffic, and usually drivers know what they're doing. Oh, or actually a mountain road. Mountain highway. Mountain roads are respect, you, you and it know, just yells at you the whole time. Sometimes you need to come to closer to one corner and not the next. Exactly. What if there is a, you know, a couple of rocks that kind of came down it's on the side? It's so oversensitive. Yes. So, so that's part of my rant is uh-huh. a lot of these systems are intrusive. Yes. So I don't feel like I'm getting a benefit out of the system. And I'll rant on the other systems a, a little bit later too. Um, so it's supposed to be a help. It's yeah. called driver assistance, not driver annoyance. Or driver hindrance. Yes. Yeah. So um, their cruise control system is really good. Mm-hmm. Works, works great. Um, also with towing and also slowing down. Um, and a lot of these systems also need to be smart enough. For example, if you're going down the mountain, um, they'll actually downshift for you. Yes. So not just using the brakes. So all those systems work. Qu- they're quite smart. If only they were a little bit less annoying. Okay, I got you. So does the Toyota have lane keep assist as well where it brings you back into the lane? Yes. Uh, yeah, it, it, ha- it has that feature okay. as well. Uh, but they are going to go further. So I want to give a glimpse of what's coming up okay. a little bit, and we'll, we can do it from some of the others as well. Uh, I went, I think it was last September, uh, to a Toyota event, and Lexus event, and they had a system that was their semi-autonomous, hands-off system called Lexus Teammate. Team mate. Yes. Gotcha. I can already tell what they're trying to do with this, right with the name. <laughs> they're, they're saying, they're saying if, and correct me if I'm wrong, but they're saying, oh, no, this is not autonomy. This is something to work with you, to be your buddy, and yes. also to remove the possibility of liability from us when you crash, which could happen if you're using any type of autopilot system. So this is not an autopilot. This is a teammate. Yeah, very specific name. Very and specific. And I'm glad, actually, I'm... Well, the Tesla rant will come later. Yes. Right. But they're calling their systems, you know, autopilot, self-driving, right, right, right. which they're not there yet. Right. No, they're not. So, so please be be very specific. So Lexus teammate, it's kind of a marketing term. Yeah. yeah let, let's face it. But uh, what what they have done and what some of the others like Ford and General Motors have done, they went out there and over the last several years, they pre-mapped and high definition mapped most of interstates in North America including U.S. and some Canada, mm-hmm. and maybe some other countries as well. And they're, they're doing similar things overseas as well. So these are, and they keep saying, this number keeps growing. The mileage keeps growing, right? right. At first they said 150,000 miles, then 200,000 miles of interstates. So they're going to continue to map all these highways so that the vehicle knows when it's on that pre-mapped section. It kind of has more precise idea of where it's at, and you know so it can stay within the lanes and at the same time it's still using other types of systems in order to keep it in its lane in order to make sure it's maintaining safe distance all those other things are still happening am i correct yeah totally so it uses cameras Mm -hmm. Uh, it uses radar like you said right and then lexus we drove had uh, this kind of concept uh, lidar laser radar basically Mm -hmm. uh, which is a little bit more precise a little bit more close range Mm -hmm. uh, type of radar um, but they didn't. They said that don't expect this to be in every production vehicle. So basically, it was kind of a testing. Uh, right. Well, you got you were lucky. You got to go into a prototype. And- yeah. So that was a Lexus LS. Actually, it was a sedan. So we didn't get to drive it in a SUV or a truck. Well, the thing's but, the size of a truck. So yeah. So, so but but the idea is this: uh, that the vehicle takes over driving on a pre-mapped highway. Right. And it will steer. It will st- you know, slow down, it will accelerate to the speed limit. It will even follow some navigation um, instructions. For okay. example, you've put into the system your navigation point, where you, your destination, where you want to go, and it will help you try to navigate there by itself, but, but not always. So if it's going it, to remind you that it wants input. 
So, for example, if there's an interchange it's not familiar with or an exit that you need to take that it's not familiar with, it will remind the driver to take over. So this is where this driver has to pay attention, right, part comes in. Mm -hmm. So if you look away, once again, now there are sensors looking at your eyes, actually. Mm -hmm. If you look away, if you start talking to your passenger, if you start to sleep, if you start to read the book, <laughs> it will know that uh, by kind of watching how your eyes are reacting. Okay. And it will remind you to take over. Now, does it work with sunglasses? Yes. Ah. Most of these systems work with glasses or sunglasses because it's also using infrared. Mm -hmm. So it can kind of, I don't know, uh, you know, I don't know all the specifics of this, yeah. but it can see kind of, you know, the heat, it can, it can have that. Gotcha. Now, once again, this is not a system that's out now. This is a system that is coming, though, right. or something like To it. Lexus vehicles. Right. And, and it'll trickle down to Toyota most likely. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it should, yeah, it and should. it will. Um, so that's what they're calling it. And, you know, others like uh, we'll talk about later, Ford F-150, mm -hmm. uh, Chevrolet, and also GMC now have, and Cadillac, have these semi-autonomous systems. So I think if Toyota wants to compete, right, they need to get to this to that uh, higher to level. the next level. Yeah, I yeah. totally agree with you. How about Ram? Yes, let's talk about Ram. Yeah. Ram I, and Jeep to some extent. Yes, yes. Yeah. So uh, so Ram, so Jeep has something, this latest system uh, that they have is um, I, I sampled in their Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer calls Active Drive Assist. That's their marketing term. Which is another one that it throws that right out there, that it's assisting you, it's not taking over. Exactly, actively. Actively, <laughs> right. So, so this is not a full kind of hands-off system. Right. This is a system that will maintain the lane. Mm -hmm. It will uh, monitor, let me switch actually here. It will monitor, uh, you know, give you warnings, of course, about lane. It will help you stay in the lane. But if you don't touch the steering wheel for a certain amount of time, it will start beeping and will remind you, hey, take over. Right, or uh, uh, slow to shut down. Yeah, exactly. So uh, Ram, uh, I believe a similar system is, is very close to coming to a Ram truck mm -hmm. uh, as well, Ram 1500. Um, and also uh, here now uh, with Toyota and Ram, I want to mention this, also trailer backup technologies, because both of them, Toyota and Ram, and we'll, we'll talk about others, offer a, a way where the truck will help you back up a trailer. Mm -hmm. All right. Can I rant? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Are you ready for your end? Oh, yeah. It's an about round. It's okay. About round. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, first of all, um, just a few days ago, it wasn't that long ago, I borrowed the uh, Ram 1500 uh, Rebel GT. Yes. Yeah, that was a blue a truck. Beautiful blue Hy truck. What is it? Hydro blue? Hy uh, hydro blue pearl. Per pearl. That was a good uh, metallic color. Metallic or whatever is the other That one. was a good color. Uh, yes. Just a stunning truck yes. and a great truck to drive. However... If you make the mistake of hooking up a little trailer, I grabbed a little U-Haul trailer so I could help move some stuff, just we're putting it in the storage, right? So I figured I was going to do this, so I went and did it. I was backing up the truck, and I forgot to tell the sensors that I didn't want them on. Okay, the, the parking sensors. Right, uh -huh. which are semi-autonomous on their own because they will detect something and lock up those brakes. So you, st you began to back up. I was in and the middle bam, of my street, and it, and it locked everything up. And, you know, when you panic, you think that you've hit something, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. I did not even realize this would happen. So there I am in the middle of the street, blocking the street. My neighbors are already thrilled. Jumping out of the truck, looking around, saying, what the hell did I run over? Oh, my God, Andre and Roman are going to kill me. Nothing. Jump back in the truck, and it's, there's no warning sign saying, hey, this is active. Something went wrong. Throw it back in reverse, start going back a couple inches later, bam! And it really just locks up. And it's like, I'm killing somebody. There's got to be a car stuck under the fender. Yeah. What the hell? So after three times, because I'm an idiot and couldn't figure it out, I finally realized, oh, that's what the problem is. Sure enough, I shut off the parking sensors and I was able to back up. No problem. And it didn't scream at me or anything else. So my issue is, if you have systems that do something major like lock up all the brakes and stop you and make your head fly through the headrest 
Maybe they should also say, this is why it happened on a little digital display. Because, God, it says everything else on that display, doesn't it? <laughs> so why not just say, brakes active because, you know, object detected something. It didn't do that, and I freaked out. I know that there's going to be Stellantis guys listening to this going, Nathan, you're such an idiot. And I am. But there are other people out there who are just as stupid as I am and aren't going to figure this out right away, and they're going to freak. So I'm just saying that. That was my rant. I'm all done. Can I can I extend that briefly? Please do. Can I extend your yes, end? Yes, I want You're to not the only one. Oh! Yes, because this has happened to me in the Nissan truck. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think both the Frontier and the Titan have reminded me that I'm backing up, yeah. which I know because I put it in put reverse, it reverse yeah. and I'm actually backing up. So here's my rant, my part of this rant, okay. is when you attach your, uh, put a trailer on the hitch and plug in the truck needs... It knows there's something plugged in in the trailer receptacle. Yes, and why is it still active when it's going backwards? Yes. You should be able to have something that goes, okay, I am plugged oh. in. Oh. Maybe I shouldn't have that active anymore. Or maybe you should ask the driver, hey, I noticed you have a trailer plugged in. I, I, is that really so? You confirm, yes. And maybe you have a saved trailer profile that is there, like some manufacturers offer. Well, I know Toyota's got a million different profiles. Yes, and so does Ford and GM and others. Uh, And boom, the truck should transform itself and understand what's happening. I agree. And this was a four-pin plug, which, by the way, was really easy to use because it's right there. There's like above is four and the the lower one's seven or whatever. So, yeah, the, you know, plugging it in was no problem. But the minute you plug it in, the system knows that there's something going on. It's hooked up. Yes, it should deactivate that or at least ask you if you want to deactivate it and may even tell a mean head like me how to deactivate it. And I asked a Nissan engineer about this yes. uh, a few months ago. And he basically said, oh, Andre, you go in the menus here and uh, here's no, how no, you no, disable no, it. No, 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 no. no, but I'm like, but why do I have to go down three menus to, to disable this? Yes, there should be a way for it to immediately notice that it's there and bring you to the menu where, you know, boom, right away. Oh, you want this? Yes. Done. Right. Yes. Other people can do it. They don't. So, yes. Breathe. breathe. Cleansing breath. <sighs> Sorry, okay. this just happened to me, folks. And I was, I think my wife was watching when I was backing up because she, she thinks I'm good at it, which I'm not. And, and she's also, like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Why is he out of the truck? <laughs> Back in and <clears throat> it happens again. Yes. It was really, and also my neighbor saw it and I was blocking the street. It just sucked. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, okay, then. Okay. Well, then. Uh, yeah. But but I want to go back to this trailer backup yes. um, assistance okay. technology because it is there uh, in some cases. Like, for example, I went out uh, boating a few months ago last summer mm-hmm. uh, with some friends. And the couple, uh, my, my fr- the friends we were with, uh, they've never boated before. Okay. But then d- decided to buy a small boat. Oh. There's, I think there was about a 16 or 17 footer. Okay. Which is pretty nice, you know, compact boat. It's bigger than my uh, kayak. <laughs> and uh, he was nervous about backing up at the boat ramp. Mm-hmm. I would be for the first time, right? Sure, sure. Everybody's watching you. There's people waiting, honking. Yeah. P- yeah. Kids splashing. Uh, so it's, these systems are kind of meant to assist if they go in a straight line. Mm-hmm. Um, Toyota now is offering that on the 2022 Tundra. Uh, Rams started to offer it, including the TRX. We have a video where I uh, use that system to back up a trailer around our office, which is kind of a tight area. It is tight, yeah. Uh, and here's what I found. Hmm. First of all, the Tundra system works to an extent. It, it works well to keep you in line, mm-hmm. but it's as soon as you it's not full featured okay. let's so to say uh, the, what ram offers is a knob that you can actually turn and actually uh, the truck will listen to your instruction and try to turn the trailer for you like other automakers yeah uh toyota doesn't do that toyota tries to straighten you out always which is okay <coughs> i i get that right mm-hmm. i i get the need to be you know going down the boat ramp and and having a kind of a nice thing so i would put it a little bit less featured toyota system i would put the ram a little bit higher Mm -hmm. than that but the ram system it was easy to um, calibrate Mm -hmm. you didn't have to measure anything just drive around the trailer around the block forward and it understands how big the trailer is but it wasn't super aggressive in reverse by that i mean it would it doesn't want to turn quite as aggressively as I would might do myself. So when you're putting in that you want to turn X amount, it's kind of like not so much. Yeah, not so much. And I'm like, no, turn now. I, I wanted to turn. So uh, if I was backing up a trailer myself, which I have done, you know, for the last couple of decades, yeah. I would want to be more aggressive with it. I and the truck was not, was not doing it. 
So, um, so yeah, so those are the RAM and the Jeep systems. Mm -hmm. And so far, RAM and Jeep, they do not offer that, you know, pre-mapped highway tech just quite yet. Yeah. But I, I'm sure they're working on I'm that. I'm sure it's right around the corner. Should we move on to the next automaker? Yes, please. That is Rivian. All right. Now, Rivian's a very interesting player in this because they're brand new. Yes. And they offer some different stuff. Yeah. So we've told with this truck, uh, as you've probably seen a TFL truck channel, so we did an I gauntlet. You and I did also an MPG uh, loop, yes. uh, basically for towing. Uh, with a smaller trailer, we did a heavy trailer on the Ike, about 8,100 pounds. We did a light trailer on the uh, MPG loops, so about 2,000 pounds. Right. So we tried to hit as many angles as we possibly could. And Rivian, so one thing that's good about the Rivian assistance technologies, actually tow haul mode. It's, it tries to look at, take a um, holistic view of it. So you say, I want to tow. It changes, you know, it gives you uh, um, regenerative braking, turns it up mm -hmm. for you already automatically. Everything is kind of preset. Um, so it kind of takes a holistic view, but it doesn't quite do the hands-free yet. It doesn't do it. Okay. And the reason why I put it a little bit above RAM you know, we just talked about the Nissan Toyota and Ram. Uh, the reason why I did that is because uh, it has, um, I can see there is a lot of built-in tech. Like, I think it has like seven or eight cameras around. Yeah. Uh, there, the built-in tech is, is there to allow it to drive itself very soon. They call it driver plus. Once again, driver plus. So mm -hmm. the driver has to be involved. Right. Um, it's not a driverless system. Um, so I'm, and I actually liked, you know how Tesla did this first on the digital screen in front of you uh, as you're driving, it kind of draws little uh, renderings of what's around you. Yeah. Little cars, little trucks, little people. Mm -hmm. So Rivian does this too. Yeah. And it's really real time and quite accurate. So, yeah. And kind of as a driver, I liked it because it kind of reassures me that the vehicle knows, understands its surroundings. Right. So it's a kind of a cool system. Does it have trailer brake control that's integrated? Yes. So that's another, because all trucks must do this. Yeah. And they have a unique uh, way of doing it. Uh, so the brake controller uh, function is actually a little wheel, toggle wheel. Which on is the very different. Wheel. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a squeeze, um, squeeze control like all the other manufacturers do. Right. And uh, as it sits, you know, it, it obviously has radar cruise control and all that other stuff as well. And it's ready to, I believe, with an upgrade, go to that next level and make it a little bit more, you know, cl closer to, I should say, uh, autonomy. I really liked the way the truck handled and how the tech is integrated. It was way better than I expected. So Well, that, because they're brand new, like you're saying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so they've had a while to develop it, which is great. Um, but maybe we should move on because I think it's, we're now getting to a point where, where there's some stuff going on. Yes, so, so next up is Ford. Yes. Now, here's a problem, and I just encountered this today and yesterday, and I made Andre upset. Oh, what, what happened? Ford calls their system Blue Cruise. Now, Andre and I have both had little kids, <laughs> and because of that, first thing I said, and I couldn't stop saying it, was Blue's Clues. <laughs> <laughs> Blue's Clues is an animated sh uh, little series for kids, little kids. And he had to deal with it, I had to deal with it. And a lot of you guys out there who are parents had to deal with it. And it stuck. And so every time we were trying to say Blue Cruise, we were saying Blue's Clues, and it was bad. So I'm going to apologize in advance to both you and Andre, because I already put this uh, in your head, and I just did it again. Apologize to Ford. <laughs> Ford, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. You really so, need to name it something else other than Blue's Cruise. God, I did it again. See? Blue, Blue Cruise. So I'm guessing, okay, this was also a, a big controversy. So Cruise I get. Okay, yes. Cruise. Blue Blue has been the color of, you know, Ford emblem. For, Ford's, yeah. For, for the, years. E eons. Right. Uh, right. So I don't, I don't, it's, it's, a, it's a weird. So I understand teammate. I understand active driver assist. Safety shield makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, blue cruise. I don't know. I'm not sure why it's blue. I guess blue is a safety color. And it's, it's safe. the color of the display on the dash when you're driving. Is it an accident? No, I don't think that's an accident. No, I think they did it on purpose. And Ford and blue really do go together. They they do a lot of stuff with blue. So that's kind of their thing. 
And I get that. I don't think the name is particularly good because people like me who are, once again, idiots who confuse that with something else. I guarantee you if I own a Ford in the future and it has Blue Cruise, I'm going to screw that up every single time I mention it to my wife. Did you put the little dog the, cartoon the, the, the little, on The it. blue dog. With yeah. The, yeah. Oh, gosh. So the system itself, though, now this is much more advanced than some of these other systems we talked about because it does take it to the next level. Am I correct? Totally. Uh, and it's uh, actually enabled now. So uh, this is not, you know, this is not a concept. It's not a prototype. Um, it's actually, you can buy a truck right now. Uh, they're offering it um, this particular um, hands-off system uh, on, their, on their upper level trucks. Right. So um, they call it different names as well. <laughs> um, you have to buy a bunch of equipment. But for example, today we basically experienced it together. Um, we had a F-150 Platinum truck, Platinum uh, which is not their highest trim level, but almost there. Almost their highest, right. Uh, almost their highest. It had all of the equipment to enable this. So mm -hmm. it had all the cameras, all the radar systems, all the sensors right. uh, that's needed for this. And it was enabled. So first, at first when they sold some of these trucks, the feature was disabled on purpose because, you know, they were still mapping out right, the Right, they weren't ready. Uh, and now it's ready. Uh, I experienced it on I-25, mm -hmm. um, th Highway 36, coming from Denver to Boulder. It actually works uh, pretty well. It's not perfect, though. Right. And here's what I noticed. Um, for example, it didn't like some interchanges, even though I wasn't making any exits okay. or joining anything. So uh, where Highway 76 um, crosses I-25, this is kind of North Denver yeah. area. Uh, the system just kind of disconnected and it told me it was, you know, relinquishing control and asked me to take control for a few seconds. But I'm like, I'm not changing lanes. Right. Now, th now ch uh, correct me if I'm wrong. We've, we've done this before. To get into the Blue Cruise, you, essentially all you have to do is just set up your regular cruise control, yeah. fire it up, and it, provided that it is in an area that it is receptive to in terms of mapping, it'll take over partially. Yeah. Otherwise, it's regular cruise control, correct? Exactly. exactly. So did it completely stop cruise control too? No, no. It, it went back to its adaptive feature. Okay, okay. It just wanted me to steer. All right. Right? Good. So, uh, but there's not a separate button that says Blue Cruise. You know, in the back of my mind, I said, I was thinking to myself, oh, this truck doesn't have that right. because there's not a special button that says blue or adaptive or something, something special. So it just kind of works behind the scenes. If it's pre-mapped, like you said, goes into this mode and the tachometer on the digital display and the gauge display turns into this hands-free symbol with a blue steering wheel. Yeah, it shows the steering wheel, which is a little unusual. But the good news about that is that it reminds you that, yes, indeed, the truck has the potential to take over a little bit. And that's great. Now, a couple questions. Does yeah. it work with towing? No, currently it does not uh, work with uh, trailer hooked up. Okay. We'll get to that later yeah. with, with GM. Um, and it also does not offer lane change assistance. Okay. So let's say the, um, when the Blue Cruise is active, you're mm -hmm. going down the highway and actually uh, maintains lane pretty well. Yeah. Doesn't bounce around, doesn't hunt for the lane lines, nothing, nothing like that. Right. Uh, quite good. Also has good distance control. I, I was really comfortable with that. But as soon as you put the blinker on, the truck doesn't respond. It just still maintains the lane. So in other words, it's not going to uh, change lanes for it's, you. It's, no, it won't do it. So you could actually give steering input uh -huh. uh, and steer it. And it will, it, will, it will work fine. Right. Will it disconnect the system and stop it once you take over the steering? No, I, I don't think it did. Okay, so it resumed it once you went into the yeah, next lane. exactly. Okay. It was so seamless. It was pretty nice. But it's, it will not do it itself. Okay. It will not change lanes by itself. So this system is not available on the lower line trucks. Your truck does not have it. Right, because I don't have all the radar. Right. I don't have all the hardware that enables it. Right, so you need the truck that has the hardware just to get it. Now, is this a paid system? Yeah, so so it costs more, obviously. Right. So uh, and uh, yeah, none of these systems are necessarily inexpensive. Uh, already, if you're buying a platinum F-150 truck, you're already in the sixty-five, seventy thousand dollar range. Right. Plus, there's a couple of options that you can put on top of it. So a lot of these features, of course, are on premium models, and this is true also for the others. Is this a subscription based? Though? That's the other part of that. I, I don't know. Mm, I don't, okay. I don't know. Well, we'll find out in, yeah. and at another point in time, we'll, we'll uh, discuss that. So this system 
is sort of where some people are going to and other people are leaving from. So in other words, there's a system that's even more um, receptive to being autonomous than this, and that would be GM. Yeah, and I, I would put it, after driving this, being in these trucks and driving it, I would put the GM's Super Cruise now, mm -hmm. Super Cruise. Uh, not Blue Cruise, Super. Super Cruise. Super. Uh, um, I, I think it's a slightly better name because it has the word super in it. I, I guess, but quick question before we get into jumping into GM. Now, some people might mention, you haven't mentioned Tesla, and that is, there's two reasons. One, we have used some of their systems before, but we haven't driven their Cybertruck, so nobody really has. And the bottom line is we don't know how their systems are going to work with their Cybertruck, so we're not going to mention the systems that are used on their older vehicles that we have tested before. We can say that they are somewhat autonomous, but they have other things that are working uh, that are not consistent with the trucks that we're driving. Exactly. I wanted this pickup truck focus, like yes, I said. Yes, exactly. Obviously, Tesla has been actually kind of a leader in this space. They have right? been. Yeah, they've been leading the space. They, they've been pushing the, the border of the semi-autonomous right. technologies, and I applaud them for that. Yeah, uh, but they're... But, but once again, Cybertruck is not... We don't even have a date. No, we don't. For so the Cybertruck. With so. it not being on the road, we haven't tested it. There's no reason really to discuss the system that you know, and maybe evolved when it and gets as there. we're transitioning to Super Cruise from Blue Cruise, uh -huh. I, I want to do another small rant. Uh, so you're going to go back to Blue Cruise real quick? Yeah. I and, said it again. Uh, I, I want to kind of include both of these systems. Okay, go for it. So Ford and GM. Uh, this is supposed to be super helpful. And I think a lot of you already commented on this on, on other videos we've done. Is you said, well, if first of all, if you can't drive on a highway, you know, you shouldn't be driving. I agree. You know, that's one comment that you may have, right? Sure. First of all, second of all, if the Super Cruise system can drive autonomously on these limited under these limited circumstances with a trailer, mm -hmm. if you can't do it, why are you towing, right? So, so, so that's one complaint people have. And also, is it really truly helpful? So mm -hmm. I tried this in the Ford. Okay, I tried to specifically look away. I was trying to look down just for a few seconds. And, uh, you know, this was a kind of an empty highway. Mm -hmm. I was trying to be super, super careful while Blue Cruise was enabled and fully engaged. And after a while, uh, it started kind of dinging because it noticed that my eyes were looking away. Right. Which is good. Yeah. But is it really helping me, right? If, if I cannot go to sleep, I really wanted to go to sleep. <laughs> of course. You know, let's say I'm driving across a state line, right? I'm, I'm on a road trip. I'm going far away. How much is it actually helping if I'm always sitting there and staring? Right. So, you know, one side of the argument is that y it's going to help keep you alive because if you do not off just in a couple seconds. It will remind me. Right. And then hopefully it will wake you up before you drift into a lane and hit oncoming traffic. That's one thing. Another thing is that you are free. This is what there's a lot of jargon from PR people. You are free to move around a little bit. So if you wanted to get more comfortable and lift your butt up a little bit and redo your seat, you could kind of do that without having to worry about the vehicle losing control. If you had to, a kid in the back, you had to quickly look back and make sure that their bottle's in the right place. Are we there you, yet? No. Yeah, that type of thing. So I, I get what they're kind of sort of trying to do, but. Uh, and I, I'll, I'll, I'll wait until the end of this video to talk about that and also some other controls. But the bottom line is that they are trying to keep you safe. Well, yes. Okay. And I'm not arguing against it. Right. So that's, just, you're asking, you know, how is it effective? That uh, might be how it's effective. Yeah. And I'm trying to do a little devil's advocate here, right? Yeah, sure. Be because these systems are not cheap. You know, they cost a lot of money, like we just mentioned. Yeah. Because they're available only on the highest levels, uh, trim levels, and there are additional money you have to pay. Uh, and, you know, what are you getting in return? Right. That's, that's the question. And I think the answer is also, um, and I think you have to develop a level of comfort with the system, right? Let's say you just purchased a brand new GMC Sierra Denali. Bam, you've never been in a GMC Sierra truck before. You like the feature, you jumped in it. But, but I think, at least for me, it'll take at least a few days, maybe a few weeks to use the system, get comfortable sure. with it, and then you can kind of relax a little bit, let it slow down for you, right? Let it change lanes for you even. 
There was a time, now for those of you who have seen various videos from TFL, you'll notice sometimes I have to wear a boot. That's because there's reconstruction yes, surgery Sorry, going on with my foot, and so it's, it's a you know, day-to-day thing. So when I wear the boot and I'm driving a vehicle that has uh, adaptive cruise control, it really does help. Because so you can rest your foot. I can rest it a little bit more. Yeah. It's still ready to go if I need to hit it, but these systems are getting so good now that they really do work quite well. And so it does help me, and I'm sure it would help others who have a little bit of fatigue or whatever. So I get that. And I get keeping your eyes where they're supposed to go. And I get the fact that, you know, if you have to move or something happens, it'll help keep you safe. However, you're right. It's expensive tech, and it's so far, it hasn't trickled down to cheaper cars or less expensive vehicles, has it? Yeah, not yet. I mean, it's getting there, right? That's the whole idea of this. Yeah, Offer the system, get people comfortable, uh, get <coughs> get more of these on the road, mm-hmm. right? And have all that data, have all that you know testing under your belt, and then offer it in more and more vehicles. I totally get it. Uh, the GM system, dude, is... I was impressed by it. So first of all, once again... Pre-mapped highways. It works on inter- interstates. Right. Um, I first experienced it in the Cadillac Escalade mm-hmm. um, over here. Once again, going to Denver from Boulder, uh, and they have a green color also up here. And the steering wheel, right? Yeah, and the steering wheel. Right. So the steering wheel has a little uh, indicator that the system is enabled. There's a little dash ma- uh, symbol on the in the digital gauge cluster as well. Uh, v- once again, doesn't bounce in the lane. Stays very true. Um, then I went to Proving Grounds with General Motors um, in, in Michigan and sampled their towing Super Cruise feature. So that was a big trailer, tandem axle trailer behind it. Uh, I forget how much it weighed. I want to say between five and 7,000 pounds, okay. I think they said. So it wasn't super light. It was a pretty heavy trailer. And we were going at highway speeds on our test track. Right. And you were able to maintain the lane. It knew the trailer was back there. and Yes. So it, it, it takes into account that extra length and that extra weight. Exactly. And it's using cameras, once again, sensors, radar, all this stuff. Um, it even worked with some camouflage, as you can see. I mean, uh, if you're watching us on TFL Talk. Right, if uh, you can see that. But you can clearly see the very front of the vehicle has a large opening specifically for some of those cameras and sensors to work. Exactly. And on their latest 2022 GMC Sierra models, uh, including their Denali Ultimate trucks and AT4X, uh, specifically Denali Ultimate, they actually, I talked to the designer, they actually had to redesign part of the bumper cover mm-hmm. because there's radar behind it. Right. And, and, and they wanted to put it, because the engineers say it must be here. You know, you can't move it because for safety reasons, that's the best view you can have. And they had to redesign the front and the rear bumpers just for the system. That is awesome. Yeah. So, and also, <coughs> uh, while, while towing, uh, while towing, I was able to change lanes. Uh, I, th- I think I did both towing and not towing. Um, you use a blinker. Um, it watches for traffic, right? So it, it, f- it figures out if there's an empty, uh, va- you know, good lane right next to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, changes lane by itself. And then <coughs> when you pass, if you're, um, um, if you're still going straight, it'll regain the right lane oh, okay. for, for you. Using, using so it'll compensate. Yeah. So so uh, I th- I thought that system worked pretty well. Yeah. I've I've now I've used it lightly, <clears throat> and I haven't towed with it. Right. So you have the expertise on that. But the bottom line is that this is the only system that does that right now with towing. Yeah. And I think it's just about on sale, uh, right? Because the latest trucks are just about to hit the market. Well, it's supposed to be on the Hummer, isn't it? Yeah, the Hummer should have it too. Uh, Hummer, they sold technically, well, we don't know exactly, but a I few, think a few few dozen at I least or, or a hundred. <clears throat> um, so the Hummer has this feature, uh, the electric Hummer. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, this feature is out there and I cannot wait to experience it more in the real world. Yeah, and we will be testing it. <laughs> because this was a test track, yeah. um, the oval. Uh, that I actually drove it on. Well, they have to control the environment and make sure that everything's working. And they actually had other people driving next to you. Oh, really? So cool. they, they simulated an actual highway. Uh, there was a couple of other vehicles around you. So that was a really interesting. Now I'm hearing, uh, this is not quite truck news, this is altogether automotive news, that GM intends to put Super Cruise on a huge majority of their vehicles as they move towards electrification. So you're going to see more and more of Super Cruise, and it's probably going to be something that's throughout 
all their lineup, I would imagine, at some point in time. Yeah, uh, they already talked about, you know, for example, like the, the Bolt mm -hmm. and some of the other crossovers that are coming. Right. Uh, so that feature is going to be available. They also recently teased Ultra Cruise, uh, which is an extension of Super Cruise, but for more, uh, not just highways, but for other side roads. So they're mapping even more and more areas um, and offering not quite door-to-door, -door, they mm -hmm. call it, door-to-door -door, uh, destination, but, but close. Uh, f much, much more advanced. Which, which is great, and that is now closing in on Tesla's territory, where they are in terms of being able to get you through neighborhoods and whatnot. Yeah, you know, and and that's that's fantastic, and at the same same time a little scary. I want to see how that works. <laughs> yeah, because we've seen some test vehicles, some some Tesla using beta tester testers as owners. Yeah, owners are beta testers. Yeah, you have to be, of course, uh, you know, apply for it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Sure. But some of these early systems were blowing through stop signs, uh, crashing. Uh, that, 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 yeah. that's questionable. Yeah, so, it, it is. And so, as cool as this tech is, it's still not completely proven. And so they're working on it incrementally. Which GM has so as so far everything I've seen, everything you've told me, everything I've read and experienced so far has indicated that GM is kind of leading the way and this new ultra system is going to be interesting. But here's the question. Yes. How often do they check those maps? Because there's a lot of people who will just can build a road in a weekend. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, totally. I mean, there's, there's, there's certain places where developments are going up and then eventually a road will open. You know, I'm kind of curious to how often they check these maps. So, so I, and I'm pretty sure they haven't told you that yet, have they? No, but I have a little bit of insight. Ah, okay. Uh, several years ago, this was several years ago, mm -hmm. uh, I was with the Ford engineering team in near Dearborn. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was uh, actually a passenger in the back seat while one of their Ford Fusions, this was their autonomous vehicle. Oh, yeah, yeah, vehicle. yeah, I remember this. Remember, they, it, it drove around Dearborn. Yes. And uh, they didn't allow me to be in the front. Of course not. I was in the back because safety, right? Mm -hmm. Because we're in public. Yeah, sure. And there were two engineers. One was behind the steering wheel, ready to take over at any moment's notice. And the other engineer was in the passenger front with the computer, laptop, monitoring everything <clears throat> right? Uh, as the vehicle drove. And they were telling me, so their system, this fully autonomous system they've been working on for years, uh, actually, so it has a three-dimensional map in its computer of that neighborhood, mm -hmm. right, let's say. And then in real time, its cameras and LIDAR and radar are building an image as it's driving, right? right. And it, in real time, it compares the image that's saved in its brain from before to the image that was happening now. Fallen tree branches, a trash can has been knocked over, you know, maybe other objects in front of you, right? So it constantly compares that and constantly refines it. So yeah. it's like what, what you and I as humans would do, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, we know the way to our home, right. right? But there could be unpredictable things happening. Well, all you the time. mentioned a tree branch falling in. That's from personal experience because I know for a fact that you were at an event uh, yes. back at, during FCA days. Yes. And a tree branch fell on your car. It was for an all wheel drive Challenger event. Yes. Ch Dodge Challenger. Yeah. And yeah, this was in, um, in Maine. And it was a nice storm. Tree branch froze off and hit us directly on the roof and actually broke the caved in the roof. Right, exactly, which, you, by the way, I'm glad you were safe, but the point is, is that had that happened at any other point in time, there would be a branch on the road, as yes. opposed to embedded in your car, and that means that the system has to see that and act accordingly, because that's not Slow part down, of the stop, exactly, swerve, etc. Exactly. So, so, yeah, it's good to know that Ford engineers, and there's a lot of other teams that are working on this too, independent organizations yeah. that are bought out or in some cases incorporated by some of these automakers. I do have one final rant though that I wanted to get to in terms okay, of okay. this tech let's, let's uh, do it. before we close up here. And that is, so, so we, and we ended with GM, by the way, if you were, you know, this is a highly advanced system. Now, there's a guy named Sean who's been sending us emails, who's been talking about new systems that are in cars, but they will work their way to trucks where they t you can take gesturing and also they are more involved systems that are working around you. So when you're doing your, you know, autonomous cruise control, whatever you're doing, working your controls, it takes your eyes off the road. And his concern is that these newer systems are actually drawing your attention away from the road and making you pay less attention to what's going on. And I think that autonomous driving or semi-autonomous driving is part of the culprit of this. And I do agree with him to a certain degree. 
that it takes your attention away and that is not a good thing and perhaps that's something that needs to be examined and I'm not as I said it's, it's a whole bunch of other things controls and everything else well I think there's two things at play here right uh, for example more and more vehicles are going mm -hmm. to touch screens right for climate control systems or, or other systems yes and that requires your attention like you said yes it does uh, if I want to you know change you know the climate control setting I need to look down maybe mm -hmm. uh, something like this uh, well if the Super Cruise is enabled or Blue Cruise is enabled, I guess I guess it's okay for you to kind of remove your attention for a bit. But is But it? what if it's not enabled? Right. Uh, or what if something goes wrong? I mean, this is an electrical system. This is something that relies on having a charge to make it work. So what if it's interrupted for some reason? What if it shuts down? You know, there's a lot of things that can happen when your eyes are off the road. And what he's getting at, and I, I, as I said, I'm playing devil's advocate here because I'm not that concerned about it, but I get his point is that there's more and more systems that are drawing your attention away from the road. Mm -hmm. And so if you have some sort of super cruise, blue cruise, whatever it may be, these systems, while you're screwing around with this other stuff, you get a false sense of security and perhaps it's not a good idea. So I'm putting that out there and I'm curious to what you guys think about all of this automation and whether or not it's actually going to impair a driver in some ways. So that's my, it's kind of a rant. I just wanted to throw that out there for everybody to talk about. Sure. And, and I, would, I just want to add that, you know, when we were growing up, you know, in high school, uh, people would say, oh, in 10, 15 years, we'll be in, there'll be flying cars. Well, there are. And, and, and there, there'll be cars driving themselves. And there well, are. we're not quite there <laughs> yet. Yeah, we're the almost way. there. But, but I think the reason is, is because of just what you said. Uh, small steps, mm -hmm. right? Manufacturers like GM, Ford, Toyota, Nissan, Rivian, Tesla, Ram, Jeep, all, all of them are, are taking small steps, right? Because they know how important this is. This right. is safety of, of people and, and uh, property. So, so uh, at, uh, one side of me says, I'm glad it's a slow process. It's an iterative process, right? Redundant process. Uh, but the other part of me is just done. We're like right now, after this podcast, I just want to go on my truck, hit a button to go home, and take a nap. There is one more thing. Yes. You know, that they're trying to push, uh, they're actually succeeding in pushing a regulation that will require a vehicle in the future, near future, to register whether or not it thinks you're inebriated. Now, yes. And, and it won't start or run if you are. So let's go further into the future and say, let's say it's detected that you were inebriated or inability, you know, had an inability to drive a car, but you hit the button saying, I am not touching you, I swear to God, I'm going to sit in the back seat, let you drive me home, and the car will do it for you. That could be pretty cool, too. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, there's, there's a positive and negative to everything, right? Exactly. But we're not, once again, we're not there yet. No, we're not and, there yet. And by the way, we didn't touch the semi-truck uh, type of... Um, oh, no, this uh, is... A com yeah. Uh, on this podcast. Uh, but there are many companies, including major truck manufacturers like Daimler mm -hmm. and others, who have been looking into this. And, and I've actually seen one of well, their Well, you rigs. did a video on it, too. You yeah. did a whole video on, yeah. on a semi-autonomous truck or a yeah. fully autonomous truck. But it was a prototype. It's was not a, an act. It's you, not in service. You did the video. Yes, but it's not in service. That's my point. Okay. Uh, I asked them directly. Uh, this was to the Daimler uh, marketing folks. Uh -huh. I, I said, well, when do you think this will be on the roads? And they didn't give a year. They said it's several years in the future. And, and I think this is why. Because, first of all, a semi-truck, 80,000 pounds. Yeah. If something goes wrong, something really goes wrong. Right, it's a huge vehicle. Also, there's CDL regulations, you know, which are more stringent, you know, commercial regulations and rules you have to follow sure. and all this stuff. That it's it's still years in the future, even though some states like Nevada is pretty open to this, right? Mm -hmm. Nevada has laws favorable to uh, autonomous vehicles. Uh, this this is yeah, but <clears throat> but I hope hopefully this helped. Uh, hopefully this didn't muddy the waters. No, no, no. You guys, please let us know in the comments below what you think about this various levels of autonomy and the systems being intrusive or non-obtrusive or perhaps there's something that shouldn't exist. Personally speaking, I go back to the days when I remember cruise control systems were vacuum actuated and didn't really keep your speed very well. Uh -huh. And yeah, we're going back a ways. So it, things have changed significantly. But we want your comments below. We want to know what you guys think about these systems. And perhaps we'll revisit this when these uh, there's more systems available and they become more advanced. Yeah, and maybe we'll put them to the test, yeah. right? Uh, because I w I'm, what I would like to do is 
I would like to get some of these systems together with trailers, maybe, mm -hmm. right, and actually show them working in the real world, which I think we're not far away from that. Yeah, you I, know what? You should put together some form of test where you have a couple levels of difficulty and see how these trucks score doing that. And we're one of the few outlets I know of that can actually pull something like that off. Yeah, because like I said, with the Ford system, sometimes it interchanges, it disables itself. I think we can rate them and grade them on yeah. these things, right? Because uh, if it's really, really uh, helpful, you know, you're going to get a higher score. And if there's some glitches or, and not perfect things, you can subtract. There you go, guys. So uh, we want, once again, your input below. Um, fascinating topic and something that's going to become a lot more uh, severe in the future. It's going to grow and more and more vehicles are going to be dealing with this. So once again, let us know what you think. Thanks. And as always, tfl-studios.com. You'll find everything automotive there. Uh, you can find stuff on motorcycles, TFL bike, uh, cars, uh, classics. Tommy is hard at work on the classics channel. Yeah, so. yeah. And we are just on the very verge of starting our big truck video series, which is called Go Big. So stay tuned for that. Yeah, lots of coming uh, on that on TFL truck. Yep. And on TFL off-road, uh, we have a ranch, Tumbleweed Ranch. Yes. And we have a new video series called Taming Tumbleweed. So stay tuned for that as well. See you guys. Thank you.